Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and in this short video today, we are going to be looking at fluid balance in hysteroscopic surgery. Though this is an extremely important topic, not only for people who are doing day-to-day -day practice, but also for students who are giving their examinations, uh, fluid balance in hysteroscopy forms a very basic point of understanding, which has to be understood by everyone who is practicing hysteroscopic surgery. So let's try to take a look at the basic concept of fluid balance in hysteroscopy and what this means. This is a question that was posed by one of the members on our uh, WhatsApp discussion groups. And if you look at the question, what he has mentioned is that while performing hysteroscopic myomectomy, so it's a large procedure that is being performed, hysteroscopic myomectomy, and he is using bipolar distension with normal saline. So he's using a bipolar cautery with normal saline for distension. How much fluid can you use before stopping the procedure? Okay, so the question says, how much fluid can you use before stopping the procedure? So I thought it was a pretty interesting question and we put it up as a poll in the group. And you can say opinions are divided and with some people so at least 50 percent of people who gave their opinion said that you can use between two to four liters of fluid and there were 54 people so almost an equal or more number of people who said that it doesn't matter how much fluid is used so which of these two things is correct and at the outset it would seem that uh, this concept of doesn't matter how much fluid is used is wrong but actually this is the correct answer that it doesn't matter how much fluid is used so while this may seem surprising let us try to see why it does not matter exactly how much fluid is used in uh, while doing hysteroscopic surgery so the concept of fluid balance in hysteroscopy is for one important thing and that specific thing which we call is not the fluid amount what we are talking about is the fluid deficit okay so we are talking about the maximum permissible fluid deficit in hysteroscopic surgery and the word deficit is important what does deficit means in clear terms it means whatever fluid goes in minus whatever fluid comes out of the patient's body which is equal to whatever fluid is remaining in the patient body and this remaining fluid fluid in the patient's body is called as the deficit now there are some limits to this deficit and the internationally approved limits are that if you are using normal saline then a fluid deficit of up to 2 to 2.5 liters is permitted again i mind you i use the word deficit if you are using glycine then a fluid deficit of up to 1 liter is permitted sometimes you can go to 1.2 or 1.5 as well but for safety sake we consider one liter and this is for a patient who does not have any cardiovascular compromise for very old patients or cardiovascular system compromised patients only a deficit of 850 ml of normal saline is considered acceptable and these are international guidelines but again, the important thing to remember here is we are talking about fluid deficit. That means that if you have, let us say, for example, you have a case where you have about uh, 15 liters of fluid being used for the entire surgery. But when you count how this is the what has gone in, but when you count what has come out of the patient's body at the end of surgery, if that amount is 14 liters, then you still have a deficit of only one liter and this is permissible. So it does not matter how much fluid is used during the surgery. It is the balance between in and out which gives you the final number of deficit and this deficit number cannot be allowed to exceed 2.5 liters in case of normal saline and one liter in case of glycine. So I hope this concept of fluid deficit is clearly understood to you a few important pointers while calculating fluid deficit which where people usually go wrong during their hysteroscopic surgery is that fluid deficit so while calculating fluid deficit you must remember that we choose either of the two distending media either we choose normal saline 
or we choose glycine we usually do not mix the media together because then fluid deficit calculation will be impossible secondly whenever you are using uh, whenever you are doing fluid balance in hysteroscopy important to note is that fluid balance must be done by one dedicated person so this person will literally have a board on that board we will be writing down so there is actually a board made in the ot the ot assistant or the scrub nurse who has to do this writes in and out let's say you you uh, connected 3 liters of normal saline so you will write 3 in the in then you connected one more 3 liter bottle of saline so you will write 3 in the in in the out that is the fluid that is coming out of the patient's body again you will start having measurements so maybe it uh, this uh, once a few liters of saline is done so let's say 6 liters are already over then you will count how much has come out and maybe this value is 4.5 liters then the deficit of 6 minus 4.5 liters is 1.5 liters this is the deficit that you have up till now and this process has to continue till the surgery is over the third and most important thing which most people miss out on is that fluid deficit deficit estimation is an ongoing process that means once you have the fluid deficit reaching up till the critical mark again i say it may be 2.5 liters or 1 liter depending upon which distension medium you are using once this limit has been reached you have to stop the surgery regardless of how much of fluid uh, how much of pathology is remaining behind okay so you have to just stop the surgery maybe 50% of the polyp is still remaining behind maybe 40% of the myoma is still remaining behind maybe even 10% is remaining behind it doesn't matter you still have to stop the surgery because going beyond this point will result in serious complications of fluid overload to the patient so it is very important to understand that the fluid deficit estimation is not to be done at the end of the surgery if you do fluid deficit estimation at the end of the surgery and find that your fluid deficit has come out to be 4 liters then the damage to the patient is already done it must be an ongoing process that happens at regular intervals during the surgery you can set your own intervals depending upon how experienced you are you may stop at every 3 liters you may stop at every 4 liters you may stop at every 6 liters this estimation you will get an idea as you do more and more cases but the important thing to note is that it is an ongoing estimation it is not an estimation that is done at the end of the surgery because at the end of the surgery if you found this value then it is already too late in one of uh, my subsequent videos i will also try to cover the remaining more important aspects of this and those aspects are first of all how to exactly count how much fluid comes in the out means how can you make your estimation of in minus out more and more reliable because the in you already know if you can measure the out reliably then you can have an exact estimation of in minus out and know when to stop the surgery and the second important point which we will cover sometime in one of the subsequent videos is how to prolong the time of surgery because in hysteroscopy time of surgery is of vital importance and how can we prolong time of surgery without increasing the possibility of fluid overload if you understand these two points then operative hysteroscopy will not be a challenge to you anymore and once you have understood how to exactly do the counting of the fluid and how to prolong time of surgery without increasing possibility of fluid overload you can work for longer periods of time which essentially means you can remove larger pathologies and that too with less possibility of complications so i think that's all that we have time for in this particular video again if you like the video i'd request you to visit our website www.endogynetraining.com there are 
uh, <clears throat> there is a link to join our whatsapp discussion group you can join the group and you can also take part or ask questions about daily life problems uh, pertaining to gynecological endoscopy so if you are interested in uh, moving up your skills and attending our regular training programs which keep happening do visit us on endogynetraining.com you will find a link on the home page to join the whatsapp discussion group this is purely a broadcast group so there will be no repeated disturbance of messages but timely updates as regards new videos that are posted as well as training programs that keep coming up in the future. So I thank you all for listening and uh, I hope you have a good day.